When I recently made my D&D video, I lamented the loss of our party's kobold rogue. Now, to, tr to try and get over my grief, I have become absolutely obsessed and made a hundred kobolds and a couple of dragonborns for this video. I'm mostly joking, by the way. I've also just had a lot of requests to do dragon models for a long time, which I've mostly just put off because I'd already done lizardmen in the past. Also, this project is kind of a two birds in one stone for me. Like, you may recall that in that same video, I included a villain model, this nobleman here. Around this character is an entire faction consisting of kobolds, Kobolds, Dragonborn, and Dragon-obsessed cultists, etc. Draconic ancestry stuff, basically. These will all be acting as antagonists in the D&D campaign that I'm playing in, and much like my previous set of models, they will be designed to be used as top-down tokens, and some of them as repeatable units as well. This means that we kind of need several tiers of different kinds of units too, like lesser Kobolds, greater Kobolds, normal mobs, elite mobs, bosses, blah 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 blah. So in this video, we will be making all of that and then some. So, let's get to it. Also, bear in mind that anything you see here is subject to change before it back official release. It is still in closed beta and it has some UI updates in the middle of the recording of this video as well, so it won't always look the same. You may also by now have recognized this opening model here. I briefly worked on this as the intro model of the D&D video, and the concept is basically this. A shackled up dragonborn prisoner covered in half plate, but also cuffs and chains. It's not really the most realistic design to have him be armored and a prisoner at the same time, but it looks cool, okay? Rule of cool. This is obviously not a willing member of any dragon cult, but maybe one day he will be, okay? He just needs the right motivation, okay? Give him time, let him cook. And there we go, we have our first finished Dragonborn Prisoner. This here serves as kind of a good intro model for the video, but we have a lot left to do, and I made half of this in the last video already. So, Kobolds, Cultists, Dragonborn, and other monsters coming right up. Alright, for, for real now, let's let's start small with some kobolds. Okay, yes, that is plural, kobolds. I'm going to be making a single template here, and from there I will be making three different kinds of kobolds with it. A kobold fighter clad in some plate armor and crude weaponry, then a simple, like, lesser kobold minion to act as general cannon fodder. And finally, I will be making a winged kobold sorcerer, and by the end of it we should have three very awesome kobolds to be used as repeatable units. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, you, you can ignore this little kit bashing experiment I did here, I was tempted in this Initially to try and make like a ham hunch esque fat kobold, which is possible by the way, but I opted not to do it this time. So, immediately you can see me reutilizing a lot of my old tricks here, like hunched over posing, scarves, a lot of crappy wraps, like these kind of things are good when you're creating any kind of humanoid animal hybrid, and I used the same technique when I made Lizardmen in the past, obviously with now with kit bashing it's even easier. And that there is our initial kobold fighter done, and there's a reason it kind of looks like a prisoner and a warrior at the same time, in my mind this kobold has kind of risen up from being an imprisoned minion to becoming an actual fighter, but to represent that we're also going to make the lesser equivalent now with a much simpler design. So this is the fodder, right? And to do that we first have to try and start removing all of this cool stuff from the model as well as reposing it to make it a bit more unique. He needs to look worse in every aspect, okay? Just a worse version. That was very easy, we basically just removed all the cool stuff when we were done. Anyway, let's move on to the third and the final kobold, the sorcerer, or diabolus, whatever you want to call it. This is meant to be a kind of long range firecaster that can fly around at, at like the edges of combat and throw in fire spells, and we'll see if there's any like floating fun kit bashing fire stuff we can do. Oh, 
I, uh, I very quickly decided I don't like having a static floating fire spell in the air, so I moved it all over to the hands instead. I'd rather it looks like there's all these flames building up between the fighter, between the fingers, sorry, rather than anything floating. And after a little bit of individual claw posing, we are done. For now, making these three has at least temporarily soothed me from the, the, the tragedy that was Dax's death. Boo hoo. Anyway, let's move on. Now, as I alluded to before, this faction is kind of a cult, and that means that we can't just have kobolds and dragonborn. This here is going to be the most basic, like, repeatable guard unit that, you know, every evil faction needs. He's meant to look like any other regular, like, city guard-esque mob, but obviously with a pretty dark and grim color scheme. Since, you know, ultimately it is a minion for a dragon cult, right? He has to look a little bit evil. There's nothing too crazy or advanced going on in this model, but like personally I've always loved doing these kinds of simple faction units when I first started out with Hero Forge and I know I'm not alone in this, it's like what I always used to do was just make the most basic simple units of imaginary fantasy factions. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, a lot of these are obviously meant to be used as repeatable mobs over the course of a D&D campaign story, so I'm intentionally keeping this model fairly bare bones. I could detail him up more, but then I'll also inadvertently make him less spammable as a unit because he looks more like an individual, so this will be it for now. So, here comes another repeatable human unit. This here is meant to be kind of like the caster equivalent of the regular guard that we just created. In, in the same vein, her design will be fairly simplistic, just like a creepy cultist with burn scars dressed in dark grey and red clothes, yada yada, you get the drill. Again, <laughs> I cannot stress enough how cool shields are as like these little insignias, like obviously all of these cultist models will be carrying variants of this little like dragon shield on them, but really there are like a million other shields you could be doing the same thing with as well. Anyway, all in all, pretty simple model, again this one will probably be spammed a lot as well, so I kept it pretty simple. So... <laughs> Uh, this is awkward. I uh, I wasn't intending on making another kobold for this patch. In fact, this model here is the last one I started working on out of every single model in, in this entire video. This character is not supposed to exist. This model actually undermines the entire purpose behind the existence of this video. And now exactly what do I mean by that? Well... <laughs> Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> here, is here is the first, the first death. death, and, and as, as I, I predicted, predicted by the way, way it was, was going, going to be that. Like, like, Tommy, Tommy is the guy playing, playing. He always, always manages, manages to kill, kill off his characters so he can re-roll the new concepts on repeat. That's six characters for two campaigns thus far, and I guarantee you it will be seven soon. His new character is going to be a dwarf bard. It turns out... Shocker, I was completely right. Within literally like three or four sessions, Tommy's dwarf Balgroom is dead, and guess what? He's re-rolling to a kobold. So, one more kobold, I guess. Okay, alright, look, look, meme memes aside, Tommy being an alcoholic, and I'm not saying an alcoholic, by the way, for all the people who were confused, alcoholic is a term from like World of Warcraft referring to people who re-roll to new characters all the time. Anyway, I digress. This here is going to be a kobold monk. I know, that's a weird combination, but he's playing the 
dragon themed monk subclass so I guess it kind of evens out a little bit. As for the appearance I have quite a bit of creative freedom but I think my overall goal is to kind of make him look like he ori originates from these same like horrible dungeons as all the other kobolds. In the same vein he'll be wearing shackles and wraps etc. But then on the other hand he will also be partially dressed in style like a monk with you know better posture and some funky clothing. We'll see how it goes. Creating weird like kind of decorative cloth chains like this with kit bashing is cool but like I will admit it's also very kind of resource intensive. Every single cloth piece here takes a kit bashing slot, every chain takes one, every bracelet etc. So while you definitely can craft cool custom gear like this, I wouldn't really recommend it as it will leave me very very short on slots for other things like down the line with this model. Overall, I definitely preferred making this one over the dwarf, like I said last video. I am happy that we have a kobold again, and I conveniently got to create it in the middle of making all the other dragon themed models, but seriously, I s swear to god, Tommy, if this one dies, I'm a bit mad. Like, this had better be it, okay? And here we have one last human model before we get back to some dragons. So every good cult needs assassins, right? And I imagine my DM will likely need some kind of sneaky stealth unit. Once again, this will be a repeatable one, but the goal with this one is to look like a kind of a mix of the previous two. Less heavily armored than the guard, but more combat ready than the cultist. And we're also going to throw in a, probably like a nice Ezio Auditore wrist blade on him. You'll see, you'll see. By now you'll probably notice that I'm also very frequently reusing this skit kit bashed scarf on a lot of models, partially just because I like the aesthetic I think, but it's also down to the fact that like Baseline Hero Forge has for the longest time made these like really cool scarves impossible to use because of how they are stretched out when applied on top of most chess pieces. I don't know why they do this, I don't know why they keep on creating these awesome items and then just ruining them by how they interact with clipping items, but anyway I digress. Now that we can get the basic version and even shrink it down, it just it looks awesome. Awesome, so I can't stop using it. Now even if this is a repeatable unit, I wanted to throw in like a lot of little tools and clutter on this character. Keys for the cells with like the imprisoned dragonborn, you know, poison, torture tool, whips, sheaths, etc. It's easier to justify detail on a rogue since by nature they tend to carry a lot of tools, right? So I'll use any excuse I can give. And like I said, I, I I want to ditch this dagger here and replace it with a proper assassin-esque wrist blade, you know. Shout out to, to anyone else who hasn't played Assassin's Creed since Brotherhood, by the way. <laughs> anyway, this this really is not that hard and it can be done in a lot of different ways with kit bashing. I'm sure there are ways to make it even more smooth and even cooler looking than what I did here, because this is basically just my first attempt. But basically I just spawned in a sword, I shrunk it down and I slapped it onto the wrist and I called it quits. There it is.
Okay, here we have our first mini boss. This model will by far deviate the most from the rest for two different reasons. Like, although this is a member of the dragon cult, he will be the one dragonborn that isn't red. You can kind of imagine this is like Boba Fett if he was a scaly medieval bounty hunter. I won't go into too much detail on whatever his story might be since I'm not the DM, but my goal here is to completely cover him in trophies and trinkets from all of his hunts. In practice, he'll also be the leader of like the rogue units we just made, so I want to give him a kind of sleek, stealthy, and overall sinister vibe. This right here is, is what a model using all 20 kit bashed item slots looks like. Most of them are small, right? But I have thrown a ton of detail onto this guy by now, and coloring all of it is pretty painful, but I, I have faith in the final result. And yes, that is a blonde elf braid strapped to his chest. I have no regrets. So the obvious difference between this and the previous models is that this is not a unit but rather a character, right? Like he's allowed to have defining features like a prosthetic foot and a hand and all of these little trophies because he won't ever be repeated. This is just one guy, just one miniboss. No guarantees on how long he lasts, but at least he looks cool. Okay, back to another unit. This is when we start getting to like the more powerful elite units of this faction. It, it was requested specifically that I give my DM like an upgraded version of the regular guard to act as the like direct bodyguards of the evil lord. This will also be a repeatable unit, but much more scarcely. The idea is kind of to take the previous dark soldier guard that I made, but make it more of a knight, like a more elite version, just bigger and stronger in every way. What I do here using kit bashing to spawn in custom clothes like a shrunk down version of this skirt or this mask that I adjust to keep it from clipping with the helmet is like pretty tricky at first like adjusting clothing is probably one of the hardest part of kit bashing but it is very rewarding. I know it's kind of weird to spawn in clothes with kit bashing instead of just using the clothing menu but again like a lot of the things in baseline here for which are just a little bit oversized so I can't really help myself. I will confess I made a lot of off-camera changes to this guard right near the end because I really wasn't liking the plain purple with the grey and armor, he looked kind of boring so I threw in a lot of black and red and also added some further armor layering on top the clothing bits. In the end I'm happy with it but like it took me longer than I want to admit off-camera to sort this guy out properly. And here is our second mini boss. It is another dragonborn, but this one will be aimed to look much more uniform. This one is supposed to kind of be the direct leader of the guards and the elite guards, so in essence what I'm really trying to create here is kind of like a dragonborn knight. However, I will confess that like the entire concept kind of goes against how I like to do these kinds of humanoid animal hybrid models. Like it will be a first time for me to have to make one of these actually look polished and clean, so I don't really know how I'm gonna do it, but I'll figure something out.
I'll be real, already at this stage I absolutely hate how this model is going, like black and gold plate armor is cool and all, but there is nothing about this model that pops or stands out, and I cannot, I, I can't even use the red or the purple color scheme on him either, since he's already got red scales and the contrast would just go all wacky. I do eventually try to throw on that color scheme, but it just doesn't work as I predicted, so I'm sort of stuck here trying to make him look more unique by just throwing in tiny armor pieces, like these knee pants or using the recovery cone to make a gorget that is, it's, it's is not going well, I don't like it at all. And this is where you can see me like basically just give up and try to completely re redo how I do this model like but like, nothing worked right so it was time to get truly desperate and yes yes okay the forgotten savior okay I'm bringing it back double modeling and yes it's not completely dead it still has its uses and here it is so I do this for two reasons one of them is to actually do the old kobold and dragonborn head stack to get a better looking dragon face but the other reason is so that I could also do some old reliable chess piece stacking to get armor that I was happy with. And you may ask, but Durf, can't you just stack chess pieces with kit bashing? Yes, you can, but it's very hard to pose the chess piece directly after how the body is posed. So if you want to stack like an entire chess piece, including arms and shoulders and everything, then it gets really hard to do with kit bashing. As for the aforementioned coloring problem, blue turned out to be like the perfect answer to all of this, right? Like it deviates from the other models a little bit, but because it doesn't look as evil, right? But since this is a captain, that kind of works. It's also a nice nod to Lawrence from the DD party who comes from this group and also wears the same chess piece combo with the same color so you know there's still some ties there it, it works it's enough for me okay and then finally the captain is done this one had a lot of mid process redos and awkward redesigns but i got there in the end just please never try to make me do a dragonborn knight ever again i can't like it just it doesn't look good you can't put clean armor on a dragon or a lizard it just looks wrong okay i'm sorry Speaking of Lawrence, uh, just as we had an elite version of the guard, we need an elite version of the cultist. And to do that, I'm basically going to try and make an evil version of Lawrence, or rather two evil versions. I'm about to do a little bit of cheating here and make two models in one go, similarly to how we used the kobold template to make three at once earlier on. First, we're going to try and make an elite sorcerer using an evil purple version of Lawrence's gear, and then we'll use that same template to make a third mini boss, probably some like creepy, lanky, evil Saltspire esque archetype. This here is also one of my favorite things to do with kit bashing. Like it used to be you'd have to double model to stack clothing like this and you'd get a lot of awkward clipping you didn't want along with it. But now it's just, uh, it's this, right? I mean, it's so clean, right? So, as I said, we are starting off with the repeatable Elite Sorcerer unit, and to make sure that he isn't too distinct, we'll slam this hood on him and keep him like fairly basic and undetailed, right? Like, so he can be spammed like anyone else. But now it is time to take that same model, remove the hood, put on a staff and do some color edits here and there. Obviously you'll still kind of be able to see that these models share the, the same template, right? But since he is meant to be their leader and look fairly uniform with them, that's honestly fine by me. And there we go, we have both an elite sorcerer as well as an elite sorcerer mini boss. And now with all three of those branches out of the way, let's get a little bit crazy with the last stuff.
It has been a while since I made a proper monster model in Hereford, but now that kit bashing is out, this is probably the best time to do it. What we're going to make here is kind of some like draconic horror to be used as a big bad boss mob. Some kind of evil twisted abomination resembling what you'd imagine like a test tube dragon coming out of a lab to look like. And yeah, yes, yes, I am using the base mimic for its mouth. This here is a really fun thing to do with kit bashing, especially with monsters. Right? Like grabbing all of the fingers and then individually extending them and curling them inwards will give this like really really creepy scissor hands esque vibe. Like it's a little bit fiddly, but I, I definitely recommend this if you like making monsters. And as you've probably noticed by now, a lot of effort here went into covering up the fact that there is a mimic on top of the head. My initial attempt with the old tendril hairstyle didn't go great either, so here is take two. And yes, since you can spawn in wings with kit bashing, you can now finally throw in extra wings like this to clip onto arms and elbows if you're a fan of like the old Batman arm wing aesthetic. In the case of this model, it felt fitting to make it just kind of look like even more of an amalgamation, right? Like this is not a dragon, it's not a dragonborn, it's not a person, it's just something in between all those three things. And to cap it off towards the end, I, I, I just started throw, spawning in a bunch of like shrunk down weapons. Like it, it used to be you can only really do this with like huge oversized arrows or spears, but now I mean you can really genuinely make it look like someone has tried to bring this monster down a few times in the past already. And it just adds a lot of nice little gritty detail on a mob that's otherwise just mostly red, red, red everywhere, right? It brings a little bit of different color. In. There it is, my uh, my draconic horror finished. I, I hope this thing eats our party's dwarf so that he starts playing a kobold and I get to build another one, but you know, we, we will see, time will tell. And of course, the final boss himself. Now, you may wonder why he's even here in this video, since I already kind of made him for the D&D video, and you'd be right. This footage here at the start is the same as in that video, but I won't be making the same version of him in as I did then. What I first made was basically just like this typical nobleman and nobleman's attire, right? But what I'll be aiming to do here is to get rid of all of that and put him in like full final boss gear with plate armor and a burning sword and yada yada yada, you'll see. And this right here is where the shift happens. I, I always find it kind of very awkward to update a model like this because everything that I had put on previously was adjusted specifically for the previous outfit, right? So you'll see me struggling a little bit here to strip away all of the unnecessary garbage from the first attire. But after that, it will all just be about making him this like really cool evil armor set aesthetic.
Seeing as this is a villain for the campaign, I don't actually have any real say in what happens to this character or where it goes, but he is meant to look powerful, so I am going with this almost kind of dragon paladin-esque aesthetic. Burning swords, spiky armor, claw-like gauntlets, you know, cr creating villains is always way more fun than creating heroes, that's just how it is. This final batch of added horns to make the hair a little bit crazier is kind of my way of trying to further differentiate him from the cleaner nobleman's attire that I made for him previously. You know, it, it, it's hard to keep your hair all nicely combed back when you're in the middle of combat. Okay, if you made it this far into the video, then thank you very much for watching. This was obviously a very big project, which came right back to back with a previous big project, but at least now nobody can tell me I haven't done Cobalt or Dragonborns yet. And in the same vein, please let me know in the comments what you want to see me do next. This here on the screen is a showcase of how all of these models will look from a top-down perspective in Roll20, and I'm sure you'll see them again in future screenshots of the D&D campaign. And for those who are wondering where the usual model links in the description are, I cannot yet post them since kit bashing is still in closed beta, but I will be sharing them all in the Discord when I am able to. Now, if you like this video, please press like, if you dislike, please press dislike, yada 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 blah blah blah, you know the drill, until next time, farewell.